So Hariji reached out to me about two months ago that Manish, uh, he knowing that I am into Shaivism and I uh, into different streams of Shaivism and he said, Manish, do you want to do a conference on Shaivism? I was sure, you know, why do you ask even? Um, and then he asked me to write a call for paper and uh, the theme for a call to paper was how did Shaiva tradition unite India, you know? what we call India, you know, how is it that Kashmir and Tamil Nadu and Tripura and Gujarat and Rajasthan, we call it India, we call it Bharat, you know, the, what was that cultural bond that kept it together? So I was thinking about it, you know, that was my theme and I was thinking about it and then suddenly it stuck me that if I go back a thousand years, just exactly a thousand years, a thousand twenty-two CE, what would I see in India? You know, how would my India look like? And uh, I wrote that in my call to paper, the very first paragraph. And I said, if I go to Kashmir, uh, Abhinav Gupta and Shemraj would just be giving their final touches to their work, you know. Abhinav Gupta would be in his last stages of his life, you know, just all the corpus that he has done, he would be giving final touches to that. If I go to Bengal, I would see that the Pala kings, the Buddhist Pala kings, invited the Shaiva Rajagurus, the uh, Siddhanta Rajagurus, from the Golaki Matha in Madhya Pradesh to act as their Rajaguru. And these were Buddhist kings. Then I go south, I would see that the Brihadeshwara temple was just completed. You know, people would have never seen something like that before. Then I go to Karnataka, you know, and I would see that the Chalukyas were dotting the landscape of Karnataka with innumerable temples, and they were called Kalamukhas. And then you go up, and you would see, uh, of course, the uh, Chalukyas were ruling from Maharashtra to the entire Karnataka region. You would go to Gujarat, the Pashupata tradition, the uh, Solankis, would provide patronage to Pashupatas. Same thing in Rajasthan, the Pashupatas would be the most uh, predominant tradition. So, and see how the Shaiva tradition spread, right? The Siddhanta tradition of Tamil Nadu that we know of, you know, has its roots in the Kashmir tradition. This, the uh, Siddhanta tradition of Kashmir. The Kalamukhas of Karnataka, from whom the Veer Shaivas came, they have their traditions in Kashmir. The Kashmir tradition, the Trika tradition that we call, you know, might have its roots in the Deccan. And the Natha tradition that came later, that spread all across India. You know, there is not a region in India where Natha stories are not there, you know, which doesn't animate the land, the folk traditions. It spread all across India. So I thought Shaiva traditions bound India into this whole cultural zone, you know, this, this unity. Um, and, and that was the theme of the conference that I wanted. And I uh, made the conference into themes of geography you have, we had the Kashmir tradition, and in the Kashmir tradition, we had practitioners who were presenting their papers. We had Giriratna Mishra ji, we had uh, Swastik ji, we had Krishnan ji. Um, and then from the Kashmir tradition, we went to the Bengal tradition. Or can you pass me the, I will just uh, take the, Sorry, this has been a long day, you know, so for all of us. So I will be very short. Um, and from there we went to Bengal and we saw things in Tripura, right? The hills of Tripura were carved with images of Shiva. 
I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, thank you for presenting it. Uh, we saw a Dr. Sharma, uh, you know, uh, uh, talking about a book in 16th century or, or uh, 17th century Assam, which tried to make an Assamese a Shiva Purana. And how that and how Shiva tradition came into our land through these process of quote unquote a vernacularization. You know, I don't like using these words, but I think we need to develop new words for all this. And then we have Argya Diptokor, right? Uh, he spoke about the Kalikula tradition of Bengal and 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 how Shiva is sort of secondary, exactly you know, to Kali herself. And there's this vast mass of literature that has been developed in Bengal from the 13th century to the 19th century that still requires a huge amount of work. You know, I've been talking to uh, Swastik ji and uh, Swastik and Argy also that we need translations for these. Yeah. But they want that our tradition is very secret. We don't want to say it to anybody, you know, but I want you to spread your tradition, you know, make a Shakta Sampradaya. <laughs> Sorry. Um, then we went to Tamil Nadu, right? Of course, a Tamil, we are no stranger to the Shaiva tradition of Tamil Nadu. We have the Nainars and we had great speakers. We had this passionate, passionate speaker, Dr. Ishwaran, you know. I mean, I wish I could give you the whole floor and you could be like, we talking around like this and, 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 and we would be all in our seats, yes. <laughs> we had Sharda Naranji. Um, she's, she's here with us. Then we had, uh, then we finished, you know, we had, uh, before even we went there, we had guest speakers, you know, very, very distinguished guest speakers who spoke on different aspects of Shaivism. Uh, we come to today, and today we had Nitya Jagannathanji. Uh, yes, you're here. Thank you for your presentation. You know, and uh, we had Jatayuji, and both of them were talking of uh, Sambandar and uh, with different aspects of him, right? Um, then the Himalayan tradition. I had no idea, you know, that. Uh, the uh, Deveshwar sh shrine, right? If is a uh, Jogeshwar shrine, yes, yes. And I've also told him that we need to make a trip to it. You know, you would take us, all of us, and we need to go there. We need to witness it. You know, to see Shiva in the hills, in the valleys, in the mountains, in the rivers. That's where he lives, right? And of course, we had uh, a Gharo Devi ji, uh, and. Uh, you said that you don't know how to sing or something. Like, we had three songs today. From Assam, from Tamil Nadu, from Kumaun, you know. From Jammu, yes. And everybody claimed that they can't sing, you know. And look at that, you know. I think we need to have another conference on Shaiva songs, you know, art, right? Uh, of course, and then we went to the Shaiva temple traditions uh, and we had uh, two upcoming scholars telling us what to do, what are the role of a devotee. You know, we almost forget that sometimes. You know, we just go there, okay, darshan ho gaye. But before that darshan, there is that preparation uh, that we sometimes forget. Thank you for reminding that. And of course, then we had a Vibhushita ji uh, who talked about temple tradition outside India and how our sthapatis, you know, go across the world to establish our dharma there. Something to learn more, something to research more and to encourage them more with money, funding, you know, so that our dharma spreads all across. You told us a map, you, sh you showed us a map and there were these blank spaces, you know, where there were no temples. And I was like, you know, there must be temples there also. 
Of course, then we came to the Shaiva literary, art, ritual, and philosophical traditions, and uh, we had Arvind Iyer presenting a 17th century text by Anila Kantha Dikshita, you know, uh, very well known. But the Shaiva, in, but the Shaivism of Anila Kantha Dikshita, you foregrounded. You know, it's lovely. We had Ramaratnji, of course, of course. You know, uh, sorry, we just could give you only 20, 25 minutes. I think uh, the topic itself was so vast that it would take about an hour, I assume, if we go through your lecture in a proper way. 55 minutes is enough. We will remember next time. You know, so. Then, of course, we had Indumati Ramanji. And I think the point that you tried to focus on was the uh, Thanjavur, uh, Marathas of Thanjavur. You know, something you said that our historians haven't given them the credit that they deserve. And I agree with you. And I agree with you. So we have that golden age, the Gupta golden age. But we, if you look at the regions of India, different regions of India had their own little golden ages, you know. Yes, and, and, and one of the things that we want to do also is to bring out the micro-histories of region, you know, the micro-history of the Shaiva tradition. So, uh, thank you for, uh, for grounding the role of the Thanjavur Marathas. For that. Of course, Deepa Durai Swamiji, you know, she's a well-known Indican, you know, she has been there with us in all our conferences. And uh, she spoke about ontology, uh, Shiva traditions. Uh, most of the things that he was speaking, I was trying to get it there. You know, it was, and one of my goals is that I want to get there at your level where I can. <laughs> then we went to the Shaivism and folk traditions. Uh, and, and as uh, Paturiji said, uh, the younger Paturiji. Yes. That, that the words that we use folk is, is just not the right, uh, it's a continuum, it's an interface, you know, uh, uh, and there is no Shaiva tradition and folk tradition because it's so combined together. And especially I've read the works of uh, uh, Sontheimer, you know, and, and uh, the way he talks about the Shaiva and the folk traditions, it's, un it's unbelievable how connected they are that you can't draw a line ki, this is where folk begins and this is where Shaivism ends. Um, uh, and of course, Dr. Bijay Barwa ji gave us this whole uh, kaleidoscope, this whole vast region of Assam that we often forget was a Shaiva land too. <laughs> um, and the graphs that you showed and the number of places that were there in Assam, that had shivlings. It's unbelievable. I hope there have been some good books written or some good research that have come out. Is it? Has, has, has there been a lot of books written on the... That's it? Okay. Not too much. And of course, the finale was by none other than make Kalyana Sundaram. His last word is Shiva, you know. Kalyana Sundara. You know. And uh, Meghji has been doing a lot of work on the chronology on Western Indology and how they have used chronology as a weapon uh, or weaponized chronology uh, against our traditions. And Meghji has written more than 20 papers, yes. Uh, and Every time I meet him, he's just working on another paper and another paper. So he's one of the most prolific uh, writers that we have here in India. You know. And uh, Dena D'Souza, uh, of course, uh, you're new. You're new to Indica. This is, is this your first? Uh, and what an opening also, right? <laughs> Um, this is again, I think your theme also ties up with uh, Indology and how Indology has represented our traditions. Um, and a lot of work needs to be done on um, this whole idea of revolution, you know, or revolutionizing or, or, or against Brahmanism, where almost everything which is bhakti oriented or which is 
I don't even like the word egalitarian. Um, so they call it against Brahminism, as if Brahminism did not have bhakti, or as if they did not have... Uh, and the terms that even I am using, Brahminism and bhakti and all that, I think it just requires a lot more thought and a lot more... Uh, huh? Yeah, that's a word that they throw around these days, and I am also uh, fallen in for that word, but uh, maybe... Yes. By following, our people have become, you know, both Linga and Nisa, because I am witness in both from my Tamil Nadu. Right. Tamil separate is Sasasani, Linga is Sasasani. Right, both right. Sasasani, so breaking India for them. Right. Right. So I think to conclude, this conference is just the beginning. This conference is just the beginning, I think. So much work required, so much work needs to be done. And, and, and some of the prominent themes that I thought we will receive a uh, uh, presentation on, say for example, the Natha tradition was prominently absent. You know, the Deccan temple region, you know, the whole temple traditions of Gujarat, of Maharashtra, uh, I think that needs to also come out. And of course, there is this library of manuscript waiting to be read, waiting to be critically edited and brought to public. You know. So yes, thank you all for wonderful presentations.